tonight, Google and Barnes and Noble join forces to take on Amazon. Microsoft will abandon old versions of Internet Explorer, and Steve Gibson gives us a roundup of this year's Black Hat. Tech news tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 146 for Thursday, August 7th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right into today's tech feed. Google and Barnes and Noble have teamed up to offer same day deliveries from local Barnes and Noble stores through Google Shopping Express, which is Google's online shopping and delivery service. The service is launching at least initially in Manhattan, New York, West Los Angeles, and the San Francisco Bay Area. Google Shopping started about a year ago and allows online shoppers to order products from stores like Costco and Walgreens and Staples and Target, and then have them delivered to customers' doors in a matter of hours. It could be an interesting new source of revenue for Barnes & Noble, which has closed six to three stores in the last five years and seen its Nook business fall 22% in the fourth quarter compared with the period a year earlier, according to its most recent earnings report. Google's model differs a bit from big retailers like Amazon by using a fleet of couriers who collect products from local stores rather than house products in their own warehouses. Delivery is free for subscribers to Google Shopping Express and costs $4.99 per delivery per store for others. Membership is free for the first six months. Speaking of Barnes & Noble, Barnes & Noble and Samsung have announced an event on August 20th in New York to show off their first co-branded tablet, the Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. The event will be held at the Barnes & Noble in New York's Union Square. The invitation doesn't provide many details beyond saying, join us as the best of both worlds come together. Back to Google for a moment. At Google I.O. back in June, the company announced Google Fit, which is an open platform for developers to build fitness apps, and its preview SDK is now available to developers. Google Fit provides a single set of APIs, such as sensors and recording and history, for apps and device manufacturers to store and access activity data from fitness apps and sensors on Android and other devices. The company says developers will be able to launch apps later this year when Google launches the full Google Fit SDK as part of Google Play services for handsets, Android Wear, and the web. Microsoft has announced that starting January 12th, 2016, it will no longer support older versions of Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer 8 will be dropped completely, although currently it's a pretty popular browser on the desktop, so having an 18-month or so heads up probably helps ease the transition. Certain operating system and browser combinations such as Windows Vista SP2 and Internet Explorer 9 and Windows 7 SP1 and Internet Explorer 11 will continue to be supported. USIS, a U.S. contractor that conducts background checks for the Department of Homeland Security, has discovered a computer breach that likely included theft of employees' personal information. USIS says in a statement released today that the intrusion, quote, has all the markings of a state-sponsored attack. The breach led the Department of Homeland Security to suspend all work with USIS, and the FBI has launched an investigation. It's unclear how many employees were affected, but officials say they believe the breach didn't affect employees outside the department. The Office of Personnel Management has suspended work with the company as well, though, out of an abundance of caution, a senior administration official tells the Washington Post. Yesterday, video game live stream service Twitch announced that it would start muting copyrighted music in on-demand videos, and the news was met with some angry content creators who claim game music directly from the capture of the game will be incorrectly flagged. Today in a Reddit, Ask Me Anything or AMA, Twitch CEO Emmett Shear says they could have handled it better. And quote, we have absolutely no intention of flagging songs due to original in-game music. If that's happening and it appears it is, it's a problem and we will investigate and try to fix it. No matter how remote you might feel the issue is, we aren't willing to run the risk someone's life gets ruined over this. He also insisted that the live videos that Twitch emphasizes to the most regular visitors would not face audio takedowns. 
This one's cool. Intel has built a scalable computer chip inspired by the human brain, containing 1 million neurons, 256 million synapses, and 4,096 cores. With 5.4 billion transistors, it is the largest chip IBM has ever built. The architecture is based on the structure of brains, a simplified version anyway. Although this is the largest chip, it draws only a tiny amount of electricity, about 63 milliwatts, a fraction of the power that's being drawn by chips in current laptops. The new chip is also scalable, making it possible to put larger neural networks of several chips connected together. Work on the project began in 2008 in a collaboration between IBM and several universities over the years. The project has received $53 million in funding from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. The first prototype chip was developed in 2011, and a programming language and development kit was released in 2013. In dueling home box office news yesterday via his Facebook page, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings announced that last quarter, the company slightly beat HBO in subscriber revenue, $1.146 billion versus HBO's $1.141 billion. Hastings also says, quote, they still kick our ass in profits and Emmys, but we are making progress. HBO rocks, and we're honored to be in the same league. I bet he is. Coming up, a robot that can build itself and then crawl away. And up next, security expert Steve Gibson is joining us. We'll give us a wrap-up of the Black Hat Conference. But first, let's thank Personal Capital, a free and secure tool and a sponsor of Tech News Tonight. Personal Capital solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier, it's hard to keep track of your money. You've got stocks. You might have a 401k. You might have a couple of them, maybe from an old job. You haven't rolled it over. How do you keep track of all that? You've got several bank accounts. Maybe there's some savings and checking. It's it, They're all on different sites, different usernames. It's a mess, right? Well... Don't pay somebody too much money to manage all of that for you. Use personal capital, which brings all of your accounts and assets onto a single screen, on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone with real-time graphs. They're intuitive, too. Personal Capital has an award-winning watch app. This is kind of cool. You can download it in Google Play, and then it integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices. So as an Android user, you've got timely updates of your finances whenever you need them. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying will help you reduce those fees. You can get advice on your personal investment and how to optimize it as well. Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay back in big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right now. To set up a free account, a free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and it's a smart way to grow your money. Thanks to Personal Capital for the support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is security expert and of course, co-host of Security Now, Steve Gibson. Hey, Steve. Hey, Sarah. How you doing? Hey, great. So it's so, been, been kind of a big week in security. We've got the Black Hat well, Conference happening in Las Vegas, and DEF CON yep. is right around the corner. Yep. Uh, actually, this is sort of the crossover day. We've had five days of Black Hat Conference. Um, this is the last day of the Black Hat Conference and, uh, and DEF CON's first day. And Black Hat was big. You know, one of the things that made the news because it was released before the conference began was the so-called bad USB, which is one of the 109 presentations which have taken place over the last five days. Uh, bad USB worried people because the two German uh, security researchers found that that essentially thumb drives can be reprogrammed to act in ways against their owners. So uh, they demonstrated, in fact, they gave their paper today, they demonstrated the ability for malware to infect a thumb drive's firmware, not the contents of its storage, but the storage management code that's in the thumb drive that is, turns out, rewritable. So they've got malware that's able to get into a thumb drive to infect it. And then when you, and, and if you look at the thumb drive, it can even look empty. There's nothing there. Yet when you insert it in a different machine, it's able to transfer the malware into that machine. So that caused a great deal of concern. And 
you know, it's sort of in general, the Black Hat Conference is just a potpourri of like crazy, amazing stuff. Often there was some guy who uh, figured out how to break the security on a luxury hotel, the uh, the St. Regis in Sh uh, Shenzhen in China, which occupies the top 28 floors of a 100-story skyscraper such that from from anywhere in the world, he's able to open and close the drapes and turn on and off uh, guests' televisions and so forth. Uh, somebody else gave a presentation showing how Google, the, the, the video camera in Google Glass is able at a distance of 10 feet away to make out the, the code someone is typing onto a touch screen, even though with the naked eye, you can't do it at all. Uh, they, they got 90% recognition of recovered tap strokes on a touchpad. Um, you know, somebody else figured out that they reverse engineered a, uh, a the the lock boxes that realtors use to 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 like uh, put keys in in order so that uh, people so that realtors who are authorized are able to unlock the box. Turns out they sucked the firmware out of the chip, figured out how that works, and reverse engineered it. I mean, for some of these, some of these, some of these hacks or or or, or security breaks. I guess there's a little bit of gloating happening uh, in a lot of these cases. Look what I can do. But the point is to make s uh, services and devices more secure. Isn't that right? Ultimately, yes. In fact, the one, the other big one that I saw that was scary is something that we've known about for a long time. And I wouldn't be surprised if if we see some headlines coming from this. And that is that in all of our cell phones, there's the we think of the processor that's running the apps that we see on the screen, but there's a so-called baseband processor, which is the cellular phone part. And that's a completely separate processor than what we think of as like running Android or iOS or whatever. It's, you know, it's running the GSM or GPRS, the actual cellular technology. Well, turns out there's been suspicion that these were that that was a security vulnerability that it was old code it wasn't something that even the 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 vendors like apple who's got ios running on their own you know a whatever a7 processor they just sort of get that from they get the the cellular thing from qualcomm and don't even think twice so during a presentation uh it was it was titled Cellular Exploitation on a Global Scale, the Rise and Fall of the Control Protocol. These guys demonstrate uh, clear security vulnerabilities in the underlying cellular side and end up being able to exploit the cellular protocol. The, of course, exactly as you say, Sarah, the, the upshot of this is to end up sort of demonstrating weaknesses and then getting these things fixed. Uh, and, you know, everyone has a lot of fun for five days while it's happening. Just just crazy stuff. Well, I think, you know, this is your line of work. Obviously, there's a huge security audience that goes to a Black Hat or a DEF CON for non-security people who are at least mildly interested in, 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 in how their devices work and, and what the vulnerabilities might be. What's the most relevant part of conferences like this? What is their takeaway? Um... It, you know, these things are so techy and so detailed that, that I think um, for non-security people, you know, they just sort of, they're, it, it's sort of hard to get them involved because we're, you know, we're, we're mincing protocols. I mean, you know, a, a non techy going into one of these presentations would just come away, you know, dazzled, <laughs> like, you know, like a caveman, what did I just you know, hear? looking at this technology. <laughs> Is so, USB so really, dead? <laughs> exactly. So, so what? What uh, I I guess what they get is the knowledge that this is the way security works. That is by by having hackers dig into this stuff and and talk amongst themselves and and often, for example, the vulnerabilities found are disclosed to the companies beforehand, so that. So the presentations are almost an anticlimax. Like these things have already been fixed 
before they are published in so-called responsible disclosure. So the, the the hackers still get the glory of saying, hey, look, you know, we can open anyone's, you know, key box in in uh, in that is used being used to protect the keys for someone's home, but we let the company know that we're going to make this presentation and they've already updated the firmware, that kind of thing. So, you know, so so the the consequence of being able to get up on stage and prance around and demonstrate is these things all got fixed, which really wouldn't have happened otherwise. And you so mentioned, everybody wins. You mentioned Black Hat is wrapping up. DEF CON is just starting for anybody who's mildly interested in perhaps attending one or both next year. What are the differences between the two? They're really pretty much the same. I scanned the presentations that are now going to be going on from now through the weekend of DEF CON, and I really can't see a difference. It's just sort of like, you know, some people like Black Hat, some people like DEF CON. Or DEF CON. Phil Zimmerman is giving a presentation. He's, of course, is the, is the designer of PGP, pretty good privacy for, uh, which is like seeing applications all over the place. So it's, uh, it seems maybe a little less serious, a little more gamer sort of like, but it's very much the same. It's just sort of like the other conference, and it, it, it always follows on the tail of Black Hat. Steve Gibson is the host of Security Now here on the TWIT Network. And what a treat to have you on Tech News tonight, Steve. Thanks for being right. with us. And let Great folks know, uh, besides Security Now, where they can keep up with everything that you do. Uh, GRC.com, Gibson Research Corporation. And I'm, I tweet from SG or at SGGRC. Awesome. Excellent. That was a new <laughs> word that I just made up. Thank you so much, Steve. Thanks, Sarah. All right, finally, we talked about a robot that can assemble itself. So here's the deal. It's a new concept robot built by researchers at Harvard and MIT, and it has that unique skill. It builds itself, it can morph into a new shape, and it can uh, just sort of walk away without the aid of humans. Regarding how they did it, the team says, quote, we developed shape memory composites that fold themselves along embedded hinges. We used these composites to recreate fundamental folded patterns derived from computational origami that can be extrapolated to a wide range of geometries and mechanisms. The origami-inspired robot can fold itself in four minutes and walk away without human intervention, demonstrating the potential both for complex self-folding machines and autonomous self-controlled assembly. Couldn't have said it better myself. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And you know what I'm going to say, don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.